plonkers, plonkers, plonkers. Hello, and welcome back to the Druzy Yarn episode 8 today. And we've got an international guest this week across the continent. I've called up Big Dossie McDonald, big brother, mentor of mine. How you doing, Dosso? Thanks for coming on the Druzy Yarn for the second time. Drews, uh, it's an honour. It's great to be here. International, I am worldwide. I'm pretty sure on my analytics there's a small contingent in Cambodia. So, um, <laughs> international star and it's, uh, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Where have you been, Dosso? You've you've had a bit of a, a hiatus on the tube. Obviously, we've mm. we've stayed in touch. We're we're yeah. talking most of the time. But for the people listening who don't get to have that relationship with you, where have you been? And Ado Bado on Instagram actually asked that. Why'd you take a break? Oh, Ado, um, great <laughs> question. I just well, let's just get into it. I just fizzled myself out. Um, I think trying to flat bat. The pandemic didn't quite work for me. I was sort of just keeping singles, knocking around down a fine leg, just trying to ignore uh, the world crumbling around me. And there was a lot of like hurdles that just kept popping up left, right and centre. And I was sort of um, taking those challenges on with the tools that I had, but the tools that I had weren't very good. I didn't have a good foundation to sort of, um, yeah, counteract all the the pressures and stresses that were coming my way. And <clears throat> it got... It was, yeah, it was sort of weird. After the days won the flag, this massive like adrenaline dump of eighteen months of, you know, I, I had jobs get taken away from um, the pandemic. I had just a range of issues just hit me, and I was like, I don't have it in the kit bag to upload any videos. And I I was trying to get some off the ground for like months, and it, and it didn't feel like I had a break from work because I'd sit there and be like, I'm gonna make this video, and then I just couldn't. I just couldn't for a couple of months, but. Geez, I feel fresh and I feel so excited and I've got that much content coming out the wazoo and me and Drew's go back and forth about <clears throat> plans for this year and whatnot and um, yeah, I've never been more excited to rip into content. So I'm, I'm sorry, Ado, for the uh, the little <laughs> the little break. I was going to sort of announce it and whatnot, but I think that can be sometimes a little bit, I don't know, a little bit me, 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 a little bit woe is me. Oh, I'm having a break. I'm doing this. So, um, I'm going I offline. Think, yeah, Let people go know. offline. You, you get rid of the Facebook profile picture. <laughs> people <laughs> start to get out. worried. <laughs> it's, it's like when um when uh, you, you see like a girl that you know on Snapchat go to hospital and she'll just post the, the picture of the wristband <laughs> like, oh, I'm in hospital. What am I here for? <laughs> I'm yeah, going I, off I, YouTube. Oh, God. I, I didn't want to do that. Um, And I knew that the people that knew me well enough in terms of like the subscribers would know that I'd be back. Um. <laughs> So I probably could have communicated it a little bit more, but also, you know, you guys know that I love making videos and knew that I'd be back and here we are. Jeez, I feel like I'm at the top. So my first analogy was batting where I was just knocking around singles with the pandemic before I got bowled <laughs> middle peg. But now I feel like I'm at the top of my uh, my run up and I'm about to steam in with the pill. I'm about to take the year on. So that's where I'm at. You're Mitch Stark's first ball in the ashes. Yes, I love cricket. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what have you actually been up to in that in that little hiatus? Fill the people in. What have you been doing? What changes have you made in the last sort of three months, four months since footy season's been finished? Well, uh, me and you talk a lot about like personal growth and um, stuff like that, which I find really, really intriguing. I love just the process of getting better even if it's 1% a day, just trying to improve yourself. And I threw that out the window um, during the pandemic. It was it felt like a school holiday. That first month when we had <laughs> lockdown, it was like I was playing FIFA with my mates because they were all off work. Um, footy took a hiatus in 2020 and didn't come back to Victoria. So it was just a bit of take the piss for a little bit. And then it it, it, it did that for like 18 months. So I started like staying up till 4 a.m., and my sleeping habits never been great since school, but I was staying up till 4 a.m., getting up at 12, sitting on TikTok till 2 p.m., rolling out of bed, and my first meal was a dare ice coffee and two crispy chicken sushi rolls. Um, and then I would just order Uber Eats uh, <laughs> at night, and I was going, oh, Drews, I feel a bit shit. <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder why. And you're going, mate, have a look at your habits. Have a look at, you know, the, <laughs> yeah, the, your foundations of the day. So... I don't know. I've had a bit of a spiritual rebirth. I've got a lot of that shit in order because um, I want to have this the springboard to have another successful year. And I don't think running the car on 
the worst unleaded ever is going to – like I'm just going to burn out like I did last year. So I'm hoping yeah. <clears throat> over the last little bit I've been going to the gym. I've been trying to eat a little bit better. I've got the sleeping yes. pattern down pat. Um, the eating's been a little bit better, a lot better actually. So I, I feel like I'm just getting the foundations to set myself up for a good year with content and work and be able to handle the – I don't know, this <laughs> – Jeez, it's tough making AFL Levo videos, mate. <laughs> Why don't you cry about it? But um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, I'm a one man band. Um, I do a lot of this stuff myself. So to be able to sort of handle it all, because the last three years I've had, I have burnt out towards the end of the year. Um, I've tried to set myself up with some good habits. So we'll see how we go. I, I might throw them in and just start munching the crispy chicken sushi rolls and dairy <laughs> coffees in the next week or so. But we're a month and a bit in, and um, I've never felt, well, I have felt better, but I, I've, I've never felt better in the last like eighteen months, so we're yeah. in good stead at the minute. That's sick. You you've switched to the ninety eight octane from the uh, the worst <laughs> unleaded you can get, and those well, healthy you, habits. Oh god. Yeah. Oh, oh well, I'm probably just going to cut you off to get you to say what you were just about to say, but I was going <laughs> to say that you were very encouraging about like the gym and um and oh, everything, the sleeping patterns, Sleep, the food. Yeah. Like, we go back and forth about all that stuff, and I think when you get into a bit of a state where you're in this rut you know it like i remember calling Mm -hmm. you going i know what i've got to do but i'm just not doing it and there was that frustration of no self-discipline like um Mm -hmm. you know you shouldn't eat half a you know cake after dinner but then (laughs) you do and you go well i don't do that again yeah it tastes absolutely unreal (laughs) yeah i won't do that again and then the next night it's staring staring you in the face so you do it again you just get this guilt and this this frustration so um yeah, you in particular were, were big on the gym and, and all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, talking about that cake analogy, like when you have uh, like an impulse to, to eat the cake or to have a night on the bevs or whatever it is, like you've got to, you, you, t- you said the word spirituality before and people think of spirituality as believing in God and star signs and everything like that. But it's just mm. being like, present in the moment and being like having reasoned choice that you've thought about thoroughly not just acting on impulse um and just thinking about why am i doing this action um Mm. yeah a lot of times over the last couple years when we've been talking i think it's just the the ebbs and flows of of life as a human on the planet but (laughs) like we yeah we always go back and forth when we're flat we we call each other up when we're flying we hit it hit each other up um but i think yeah exercise is one of the main things um Mm. that's gonna hold you in great stead because you're just getting your body to function the way it should be like as a creator you're always sat in your room you're always on your laptop you're always on your phone on your socials and whatnot and that's a whole nother kettle of fish social media in itself but Mm. just getting outside of your room and moving your body working those muscles making sure that your metabolism's right eating the right things at the right time like once you change the oil in in your machine you're gonna you're gonna be operating on all cylinders as opposed to yeah just treating it treating your car like shit if you will um yeah and yeah, yeah you've been going to body fit most days of the week and i'm stoked for you and you're you're seeing the benefits of it now um so the self-discipline game changer isn't it yeah 100 percent um yeah like i'm uh, as you know and i think a lot of the subscribers and the audience would know that i'm, I'm quite anxious and um I, I'm not a gym guy. Like in PE, I'm a prac guy. Like I want to rock up and kick the footy and mm-hmm. I'm not really a theory guy. And even though PE theory is essentially about sport and whatnot and it should be a class that I enjoy, I'm not really a, a theory guy. So I'm not into learning uh, techniques and learning muscles and learning this. I sort of want to rock up, be told what to do, be told how to move something and sort of learn on the go. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, uh, Roggie... Uh, was massive on body fit. He, he did the eight week challenge a couple of years ago. Lost eight percent body fat or ten percent body fat. Um, he went from sort of a good, good rig, good average rig to being genuinely ripped. And that's not the reason that I've started to go to the gym. <clears throat> it, it's more the social, and it's more, uh, it's more for my head. Like I love mm-hmm. getting into body fit in the morning. I've been going every morning, and um, there's a group of people around you, and you, you chat to the trainer, and you contrast that to what I was doing last year, which was, as I said, up till 4am getting my screen time up to 10, 11 hours scrolling TikTok. 
um, getting up at 12 and smashing a dare ice coffee and then just sitting there going, why do I feel horrendous? Um, mm-hmm. and, and now where I'm at is like I'm getting up, I'm getting the blood pumping and for me it's not about like changing my body too much. Obviously it'd be great to get rid of the dad bod and the mud guts but that's sort That'll of come. a vibe. <laughs> that's sort of a byproduct of just getting uh, getting out into an, an environment where we're all like uh, all, all improving and mm-hmm. I don't know I've really enjoyed it uh, my girlfriend as well yeah is a big advocate for for fitness and whatnot so I've sort of had Drew's Rod uh, my girlfriend Georgia just the, and and they know like they do this stuff for the same reasons just encouraging me to to get into a place but because I was so anxious and I was like oh a room full of 20 people um, doing exercises that I'm not quite sure I can do I'm very weak I'm very unfit I was very apprehensive to do it for a long time, but um, I would say that exercise at the minute is sort of one of the main pillars in the foundations of what I've been sort of trying to build over the last little bit. And I'm not trying to sound preachy or anything, but just from my experience and a lot of people's anecdotal experience is that, geez, once you get into the swing of exercise and do it consistently, um, you probably won't turn back. And it's something that I yep. am hoping to have in the kit bag for the rest of my life, hopefully. Um, fast yeah. forward six months and I'm smashing bergs and sleeping in. But um, at the moment, <laughs> I do feel... Playing until 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah, doing absolutely nothing. But at, at the moment, it, it is helping. And um, yeah, I'd encourage people that are anxious or that don't really feel like they know um, that much about exercise and whatnot. Like a body fit environment is is great because the trainers come around and they go, oh, Kados, just, you know, if your squat's wrong, but... you know, and they help me. Like they go, oh, you know, put your mm. heels to the ground and put your bum out. And then they'll float around the room and help others. But you've always got a lot of help in the room. When, you know, in 2019, I would go to the gym at 10.30 at night by myself so no one else was in there. I'd do exercises that I knew I was doing wrong, but I was too afraid to ask for help. Um, and I'd get in and out in half an hour just to sort of tick off going, but it wasn't doing anything. When at the moment yep. I'm, I'm sweating, my heart rate's up, my my zone's pumping. Um, yeah, it's been pretty good. Um, that, yeah, you were talking about being in that environment with all those people. Human interaction is another pillar, oh, yeah. I think. E- exercise is one, human interaction is another. And it, it goes back to you being in your room during the pandemic and mm. whatnot, um, just being so isolated, only having your dad to live with and you're locked in. You're not seeing mm. people. Yeah. Um, that's something that I've made a conscious effort to do when I go for a walk or if I go to the shops, I'll try to engage in conversation with the people I walk past. Um, and it, it just makes you feel like a normal person. As I said, I like to think of being a person as being a homo sapien. What have, the, what have we done for millions of years? Obviously, mm. technology is advancing so quick that we're, we're getting away from that sort of thing. But yeah, just engaging with people, smiling at them and having those interactions because that's what makes humans humans that community, that, that social aspect. Mm, yeah, well, I lost that for 18 months and so did everyone else. Like I'm, I'm not saying my situation was worse than anyone else's because everyone went through it. But um, even that, like I, I think of the kids that have footy clubs to go to and schools to go to and they couldn't quite do that for 18 months, two years. Um, mm. And a, even myself, like myself, I, I love the environment of going to the G every Saturday and it's, it's sort of like, yeah, it's one of those things in the week that sets up my whole week and that got taken away and just little things like that. But also, yeah, not being able to see the boys as regularly. Um, it sort of it sort of gave like the anxiety um, a, a bit of a chance to grow because we mm-hmm. got locked away for like, especially in Melbourne for six, six odd months-ish. Um, and in that six months, I got really comfortable being at home and really comfortable yeah. not seeing people. And then it was a little bit harder to get back out into the world and see people. Um, like all my sort of symptoms uh, pricked up sort of tenfold. And I remember going like, oh, geez, it's so exhausting to go for a coffee with the boys. Like it's so exhausting to do, do all these. But this is when I was running on that bang average unleaded and I've just found in the last <laughs> little bit and I don't want to go the early crow I don't want to sort of celebrate and be like you know I've passed it no I'm you're moving in the, the right woods. direction though that's yeah uh, yeah. Under, yeah but um but yeah in the last little bit it's definitely uh yeah it's definitely improved but yeah there's still highs and lows uh progress isn't linear um take one day at a time we'll be right yeah <laughs> for sure um something that you've done to sort of 
uh, reduced your symptoms of anxiety, which I've created a habit out of, I and mean, I'm very happy to, is meditation. This is the Spirituality oh, yeah. Podcast, mate. Yeah, this is great. But, uh, this is a great podcast. <laughs> um, so, meditating. I'll, I'll go first. I am doing a healthy habit every month this year. So, started in December, started early. <laughs> Another thing we do is, oh, we start our weeks on Sunday, Dos. Sunday yeah. is the new Monday. Yeah, sun- Sunday's the Monday. Um, and then Thursday's my Friday. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday's my Saturday and uh, it's not working. We should probably get back to the structure. <laughs> no, but yeah, kicking off the, the week a, a day early, it feels like, feels like you're getting one up, one up, one on other. I don't know. We're getting one ahead. It's a, it's a Sunday today and yeah, so my healthy habit... Um, Last month in January was meditating, but yeah, I started early. I started with the exercise in December because I wanted to to get that down. And yeah, going to the gym now for me after a few years of doing it isn't a chore. It's something that I need to do. Like that is a big tick on my day if I can go to the gym. But uh, last month did meditation. This month I'm doing six a.m. wake ups. Get into bed at nine thirty. Wake up at six. First mm. thing I do in the morning is wake up and meditate. And my mental clarity. And the sense of myself, as cheesy as this sound, has never been clearer. Like, mm. um, when you find a way to switch off your brain, to switch off your mind, which at times, especially being on your phone, um, all of the news that's going on at the moment, like, it can run at a million miles an hour. But just spending, say, 20 minutes in this state of uh, mental clarity, there's, there's no fog in there just focusing on your breathing. Um, it's just so good to just shut off all that external noise and just look inward and question yourself about who you want to be and stuff like that. It sounds a bit cheesy, I know, but yeah, if you give it a crack, it's just like exercise. Like if you go to the gym for a month or two, you'll never find anyone that says they'll regret it. And I, I'd say the same thing about meditation. Give it a crack. Um, what what has meditation done for you? Well, it's taken me ages to get my head around it. Um the lady that I was seeing that was sort of helping me with my anxiety um, really recommended meditating five, uh, three times a day for five minutes. And it's one of those ones where if someone goes, oh, you want to you know, get a bit fitter, do 10 push-ups a day. And it's one of those ones where you go, well, 10 push-ups a day is so little that I won't do it because it's so little. Like if someone <laughs> goes do 100, then I might have a crack at 100. Yeah. But I don't know, it's such a little change that it's like, how could that do anything? So she recommended doing five-minute breathing exercises three times a day, which would help bring down the calm. Um, she was like The way she spoke about it was saying, like, I'm sort of, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm sort of, this is only on YouTube? No, it's on Spotify. Yeah. No, 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 on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Oh, Make sure you leave on. a review and a rating. Head on, head on <laughs> over to YouTube for this section. Uh, she said I was sort of like up here with the stress and like continually to calm yourself down through exercises, you can bring your stress down a couple of levels where like Mm -hmm. instead of just being stressed all the time, you know, you might be a little bit stressed, but through the exercise, you you bring yourself down like a couple of levels. And that really excited me. But I was doing these five-minute breathing exercises and I was like, this isn't really doing anything. So I was only doing it once a day and then I sort of binned it in. And I've done that with exercise. I've done that with meditation. I've done that with everything. Mm. And it got to a point end of last year where I'm like, I went and saw her and I'm like, I'm not doing any of this stuff. <laughs> like, I'll yeah. just be honest. Like, I'm not doing it. And she's like, well, you got to do the work. Like, <laughs> it's not going to happen if you don't do the work. And I was sort of desperate enough to be like, I've really got to have a crack at this. Um, so I got the Smiling Minds app and <laughs> they've got, and it's free. And they've got heaps of meditations from like 15 minutes to like five minute ones. And sometimes if I don't have that much time, I'll do like a two minute one. But I'll do it two or three times a day and you can pick a bloke or a lady that speaks. You can pick music in the background or not. And it counts the time you've done for the day and it has like a little streak next to it and it's addicting. Mm-hmm. So I'm up to like 33 days in a row. I've done it over seven hours and it's only in like five minute bite sizes. Yeah, um, I've done like 70 sessions and um, yeah, I, I really like the sleeping ones. I really like... There's ones that talk about stress and, and whatnot. But for me, um, I've got to do the work every day. And that's what mm-hmm. it took sort of two years to realize is like, as I've said before, getting off the dare ice coffees for, for a week doesn't mean you get back on them next week because it's yeah. just not 
sustainable and I the want to do pat things. on the back that you used to yeah. say like you do something for a week and be like yeah I've done well all right now oh, back to geez, regular that, programming that, <laughs> yeah, that week that week was good now smash some chips and gravy and and have a dare ice coffee and, it, and that's <laughs> not gonna help like I want to do things that are sustainable um for myself and um yeah I've just found this little groove with the smiling minds app and it's definitely yeah, it's definitely helped but it's just all about doing work every day I saw Steve-O uh, from Jackass on his podcast talk about um, people who have addictions and are recovering never say they've recovered. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I recovered from alcoholism or whatever it is 20 years ago, yeah. but I've recovered. It's like I'm recovering. And he says, you're always recovering because you're always putting in the work every day. And he goes, if you're not putting in the work, you're coasting. And generally on a bike, if you're coasting, you got your feet off the pedals and you're going downhill. So their sort of mindset is if you're coasting and not doing the work, you're going slowly downhill. Yeah. Um, so I sort of took inspiration through that where I'm like, yeah, I've just got to put it together. I've just got to do the work and I want to do the work. Um, and it hasn't been that hard. It's, and, and to keep my streak up, sometimes I'll do two minutes a day. It'll be the last second. Um, I'll chuck it on before bed, a little two-minute meditation, try to do the breathing with it. And calms me down. But then other days I look and I'll do like a seven one, an eight minute one, and a four minute one. And I've done sort of 22, 25 minutes. And I'm going, you know, six months ago, I would never sit down and do 25 minutes of meditating. But I don't know. It, it, yeah, it, it is just, I feel like if you're a little bit younger listening to this one, you might be like, oh, geez, these boys are waffling for a little bit. Um, but I feel like if you're in your 20s and you're going through uni and you're going through, uh, the sort of stresses and you've just entered the world and it, it's trying to find out who you are sort of thing. 100%. I, I feel like stuff like this, and it might not even resonate with you now, but it might be one of these things where you come back in a couple of years and go, oh, that part of the pod, which I found a little bit boring, I now resonate with so much now that I'm 23, 24, 25. Um, yeah. So yeah, if, if it helps anyone, this sort of chat, then I'm stoked to share it because it's stuff <laughs> that me and Drewsy have been yeah bouncing back and forth with for the last like 18 months yeah i think if you can get a head start on it obviously it's pretty hard to relate to if you're just sort of fresh out of high school like you got all your mates and it's a bit of a different dynamic um something that you said to me once a couple of weeks ago was you feel like you're the clouds are still there like you still have these stresses <laughs> yeah. and a little bit of angst but by mm. creating all these healthy habits and grinding as much as you can yeah, you're parting the clouds, mate. You're, you're keeping them away as much yeah. as you can. Um, yeah. Do the clouds do the clouds move permanently, or are they are they always closing in? Are they going outward or inward? How, uh, how do you see that happening? <laughs> well, at the moment, I see them coming inward. So yeah, I've I, I think I've upgraded my analogy. I've got a better one. So I felt like <laughs> this dark shadow sort of engulfed me for about eighteen months, and I feel like yeah. over the past two or three months of just the work that I've been putting in. I've got a bit of separation on it. So I'm, you know, in this analogy, I'm walking in the park. 18 months ago, six months ago, I was sort of this blacked out figure because this shadow had engulfed me. But at the moment, I've got like a meter on it, but it's mm -hmm. still every step of the way behind me. And I feel like I'm a big boozy weekend on the piss, um, a big week on, on the Mackie D's, um, a big week of me 4 a.m. stay ups and dare ice coffee binges uh, a big week of 12 hours a, a day of um, social media away sniffing unleaded petrol <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah doing all the good stuff um, all the fun stuff really um, I, I feel like I'm just a couple of bad habits away from it catching up again and I just yeah. feel like it's not that far away so mm -hmm. I don't want to celebrate or pat myself on the back or um, yeah be too excited because I feel like the tide can turn at any stage. And I'm hoping um, through a sort of sustained period of these good habits, I'll put more of a gap on the, on this shadow, on this dark mm -hmm. shadow. But at yeah. the moment, I don't feel like the gap is that far. So that's why I'm just still desperate to keep doing all the things that I've been doing to keep it at bay. And as Steve-O said from Jackass, if you're doing the work, then that's, that's all you can do really. Like, mm -hmm. When you throw the towel in, pat yourself on the back and chuck out all the good things that you've been doing, that's when you'll yep. find yourself in trouble. So I'm confident that what I'm doing at the moment, if I just stick at it, it'll be, yeah, it'll be all right. Yeah, it's just doing the work, like you were saying. 
And um, on a walk with you one day, I, I come up with one of my better quotes that I'm more proud of. It's funny that you said a walk with me because Druzy lives in WA and I live in Geelong. But um, <laughs> we go for our walks. <laughs> yeah, we meet up in the metaverse and we go for a bit of a stroll and talk NFTs. Uh, no, we, yeah, we always <laughs> chuck the we always chuck the headphones in and we go for a nice little stroll together, just in two different sides of the world. <laughs> it's lovely. It's like we're right there with each other. But the best bit of gear from my end, I reckon, is actions speak louder than words, which speak louder than thoughts. Right. So obviously, I've just added to the the classic quote: "Actions speak louder than words." But um, yeah, people get so caught up in their thoughts, like all that angst and whatnot. People don't realize like you are not your thoughts. Everything that's going on in your head, all your worries and stuff, how much of that stuff actually comes to fruition? A very small amount. Um, so yeah, being able to, yeah, through meditation and healthy habits and exercise that sort of distracts you from your, your mental fog or whatever, you, mm. you have clearer thoughts and then your clearer thoughts lead to like, what whatever you say being a lot more uh said with a lot more reason and judgment because there's not as much fog in there to to cloud that um but yeah the main one is actions and this is what i was saying to you all last year action is the the key like you can s- sit around and say oh i'm gonna sign up at the gym next week and mm. um like I'll, I'll get there eventually um to your credit you have gone in gone in there but it's not from really saying that, although that does set you up, from getting your keys, getting in your car, driving down to body fit and, and actually trying to better yourself. But that applies to anything like doing YouTube or whatever. Oh yeah, I'm going to film this video. Are you actually going to do it? Or are you just saying that because you like the idea? And I think lots of people sort of start out or when they like the idea of going to the gym, they'll say, oh yeah, I want to go to the gym and I want to lose weight. And I'd, it'd be nice to get into a habit of going four times a week and then I'll start to to eat healthy. None of mm. that will happen if you actually make it happen. And I think it's once you start to actually do it, do the actions, you realize it's really not that hard to, to get these healthy habits in, in motion and becoming a part of your regular life. And now you're what, like a month or two into body fit? Like you keep doing that for another two, three months. It'll just become your daily ritual and you won't even have to think about it mm, yeah 100 percent. and i for me in particular like trying something new or trying something challenging or whatnot it's very very daunting so mm-hmm. for ages i remember saying like i think i know the recipe out of this and it's the it's the most you know it's <laughs> it's obvious it's not like i'm breaking new ground by saying eating well getting sleep and doing some exercise gives you a fair chop out but um, I remember saying, yeah, for ages, like, I will go, I will go, I will go. But the thing holding me back was the th- thing that I wanted to defeat, which is that negative um, self-talk that you can't do this, that um, you're too scared to, you're too scared to leave your house, you're too scared to sign up, you're too, too scared to walk in and um, have a crack at it. And I remember telling you, like, I can't wait to go so much because I get quite um, – quite anxious anywhere I go to be honest um Mm -hmm. and there's always like these I always get those butterflies in my stomach wherever I go and I remember telling you like I want to go so often to the gym that it's not like a big thing for me to like all right I'm going to the gym I'm going to the gym I'm going to the gym I wanted to make it a place that I go so often that I get really comfortable there and um yeah it took like a month but I'm at this point where like it's not a big ordeal to go anymore. It's sort of like just a thing that I do because I've been going four or five times a week. So hopping in the car, pumping some, the spins by Mac Miller. Um, Shout out to the goat. Got got the car windows down, just yelling, going, I'm the man. And then I rock <laughs> up and lift less than a lot of the uni girls and, and the mums at the, <laughs> at, at, at the class. I, I lift a, a lot less. But um, yeah. yeah, I've gotten to a point where I've – sort of tick that box where it's not uncomfortable to go anymore. And that's, uh, it's sort of a big thing for me because a lot of places are. <laughs> yeah. You um sent me a, a TikTok a, cu- a couple of weeks ago. Mm. Some bloke, a uh, bit of a self-improvement bloke talking about doing some thing, certain things in a day, which will make your life better. One of yep. those was lift heavy things, go in the ocean. And what was the other one? I always forget the third. Um, it was this pommy bloke. It just, it was like an eight second TikTok. He's like, Lift heavy things, uh, do things that scare you, get in the sea, is what he yeah. says. Have you been goes, doing if, that? <laughs> if you do that, you'll live healthier and happier. Uh, I have, yeah. 
Uh, I love hopping in the ocean. I've lived in Torquay all my life and hated the beach. But um, I just – and it's summer at the moment, so that's not really – uh, it's not that big of a, of a task, <laughs> but um, I'm into that like cold water, that sort of. There's something spiritual about the ocean as well. Um, I, yeah. I probably sound like I'm off with the fairies this ep. When I, I <laughs> absolutely I not. If if you don't like yeah. this talk, you can click <laughs> off it. I'm loving it because <laughs> I, I don't feel like I am. But like genuinely, like getting in the ocean is has been like <sighs> when you're in the water, your thoughts turn off weirdly. Mm-hmm. Like you can't. I stop thinking about like, oh, geez, I've got to edit this later. I've got this to do. I've got this to upload when I'm in the water because I'm like, geez, is that another big fuck off wave coming to hit me? Like, <laughs> am I, do I have to float over the, oh, geez, is that like, is that a, yeah. what, what's that dark thing in the water? All right, no, it's just seaweed. Like you just, <laughs> you just think about being in the ocean. You're very present in the water. So um, yeah, I've been, I saw that TikTok and I'm like, there's no reason why I can't, you know, go to the gym. Uh, head down to the beach because it's right near my house and do things that scare you. Well, everything scares me. So I've been trying to um, take on everything that I take on with a bit more positivity and a bit less like, oh, I can't do it, I can't do it to fucking oath you can. Um, so everything scares me. So I suppose I do things that scare me. Yeah, everything scares you. That's a good point. Um, <laughs> every, everything is going to be hard to some extent. Like we we've... Another uh, quote that we like is, choose what is hard for you. you you're going to find it hard staying at home, being socially isolated, um, having a shitty sleep. Like when, you're, when you have all these bad habits that are easy to fall into because you literally just have to do nothing to sit mm. at home, eat shit food. It's so easy to do that. But you're, having a, you're ha- not having a good time. Like life is probably harder when you're not doing those things. So doing those harder things much more rewarding and you're going to get future benefit out of it, which is, yeah, really what discipline is. Yeah, that um, that choose your harder thing that we go back on and forth on. Uh, it was like another meme or something that we saw on the internet and I sent it to you and it was like, choose your harder, like going to the gym's hard, um, uh, doing things that scare you is hard, being disciplined, like going to bed at 9.30 is hard, um, getting eight hours sleep is hard, but what's also hard is... Um, smashing macas and being overweight um it's it's hard staying up all night because you know that seems easier um but you've got no sleep so it's like choose your harder like it's it's hard to be fit healthy and self-disciplined but it's also a, a different sort of hard to not be that um and the, yeah you, the difference you, is though you'll get benefit from choosing of, the of harder course. things yeah which is funny, like in the long term, the harder thing you choose is going to be better off. It's, oh, the world's weird. The world is weird. <laughs> Isn't it weird that like the best food in the world is horrible for you if you eat it too much? And like yeah, the harder thing you shite. choose, the harder thing you choose is better for, like it's just a bit fun and games, yeah. God. He's playing fun and games. <laughs> playing um, funny buggers. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep going on this uh, self-improvement, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> big dad that we started with yeah. um you said when you're in the ocean you're, you're very present and this is something that i struggle with a lot is being present i think everyone does because you are in the position you are now in because of what you have done in the past <clears> the work you've put in in the past and you look back on that with pride or you've made mistakes in the past and you learn your lessons from that and whatnot but you also look into the future like how can i be in the position that i want to be a few years down the track, a few months down the track, next week, whatever. But the present moment is the only thing that is actually real. Like, the past is gone, it's not happening anymore, and the future mm. is unwritten. Like, people will take things for a given. Some people aren't ambitious or whatever because they feel like they, I don't know, they don't have that self-belief to achieve what they want to do. But, like, the future, as we've seen in the last couple of years, you don't know what's around the corner. <laughs> and, like, if, if you're doing the right things in the present moment, um, yeah, those are just going to be the building blocks for your future. So instead of looking to the future as the end goal, let's say, I don't know, DOS is the bloody Melbourne home games presenter, whatever mm. it is, like, staying in that present moment and obsessing over what you have to do to get there during that day, like, take that one day at a time and just absolutely smash out that day because that's going to hold you in better stead than looking into the future, daydreaming about it. We like a daydream, but it's that actions that you've got to do day to day. Something that I've started doing is writing down, um, shout out to Struthless, you got me on to him, I've been watching him. Mm. Um, 
So he said, write down two lists every day. One list of what you need to do, like you absolutely have to do, otherwise future you will be in strife. And then write down uh, things that you'd like to do, including those things that you need to do. So a list of like important priorities. And then Mm. ideally I'd do this much. So let's say like I need to get this pot out today. So that's on the the need to do list. And then it's on my like to do list. I'd like to get the pot out, go to the gym, clean the house and do all that stuff. If you tick off the things that you need to do in that certain day off, that that's a tick. That's a tick on the day because you've got your priorities done. And then if you clean the house and go to the gym, that's an added bonus. Mm. And um, yeah, that, that is th- different ways of getting dopamine. And it's do- doing good things like that, which um, have helped me. But yeah, staying in the present moment, it's a hard thing to do. Um, but yeah, it's something that I think everyone can benefit from, just being present and enjoying life because one day we're going to die And you don't want to spend your whole life looking to the future, to the future, to the future, or looking back into the past. Like, just enjoy the day for what it is. Yeah, well, you said there's different ways to get dopamine. Oh, my God. The way that I was getting my dopamine in the last 18 months, and it was probably off the back of not having much work to do or having gigs and stuff taken away. So you start to um, sort of self... Uh, well, I can't remember the word self punish yourself a little bit. You're like, yeah. oh well, all these gigs self jeopardize. Yeah, um, what's the word self self deprecate? Self, nah, um, nah. Someone who drinks all the time because they're a bit upset in themselves. They'll self sabotage a bit of self sabotage. Yes, there it is. Um, so yeah, I, I I instead of waking up and having your oats in the morning as an an an, an, an analogy for my day um instead of waking up and having something that's going to fuel you all day i was waking up and having bloody i don't know a packet of lcms like it it, like the way that i was living was like my dopamine was fueled off like little sugary hits and non-sustainable hits so instead of going for a long walk or a bit of exercise or a bit of a run i'd flick through tiktok for 10 hours a day and yeah um instead of eating something that's going to sustain me all day i'd have something that was caffeinated like a big dare ice coffee, which are delicious and I haven't <laughs> had in that long and I might go and get one today. Um, <laughs> and, Treat yourself. And the, like the amount of like little sugary hits of dopamine that I was getting that it were just unsustainable. And it's a lot of things that a lot of people do. It, it Like a lot of people are stuck in that pick up your phone, pick up your phone, pick up your phone, little impulses, little sugary hits of dopamine. And if you can ever get a chance to detox off all those sugary hits um oh man Uh, just give it a crack and and you'll find out how hard it is like when i started to try and put the phone down from 10 hours of uh, screen time a day to about an hour hour and a half two hours at the minute god was i like reaching for it i was like trying to pick (laughs) it up i was like fiending for my phone Um, yeah and that's when you start to realize oh geez like it's not a choice that I'm picking it up. Like I'm not picking my phone up as a choice. I'm not staying up till 4 a.m. as a choice. I'm not eating shitty food as a choice. It's just these impulses and these habits that I've got, these little sugary hits of dopamine. And when you switch those out for your long form, uh, like those those energy burns, those sort of long-term, yeah. long-form energy burns of um, dopamine, then, yeah, you're fueled all day and you're not looking for those sugary hits. Yeah, you can't let those little impulsy little dopamine rushes get on top of you. You have to be on top of them. you got to be in control. Um, yeah, I remember, like, last year your screen time was extortionate, like being on TikTok, yeah. Insta, Twitter for so long. Um, you, yeah, you really have to control those impulses and make sure that you're on top of them. Um, and yeah, setting, setting time limits on apps is something that I do. So Insta, I have like half an hour a day. I'm not on TikTok too much, so I don't have to worry about that, but I've deleted Snapchat off my phone, deleted Facebook. It takes away time from doing the things that you want to be doing. Um, and this is something I've been reading like the daily stoic, like stoicism, a page a day. Um, just realizing what is real, like you, you've been saying no to some things as well, like going out and seeing some people at times. Not because you, you don't like them or because you don't want to see them. It's just like, where do you want to spend your time? I want, I want to spend time grinding away at my channel. I want to spend time at the gym. I want to spend time meditating and, and bettering myself, trying to have a better understanding of myself. Once you get on top of those 
like going on TikTok, scrolling through TikTok, controlling your impulses. That that's not real. Like I don't think anyone really goes on there with proper intent. It's just addiction, and you you're doing it without realizing it. But once you strip that back, and yeah, putting those those long burn sort of habits, healthy habits, going to the gym and whatnot. Like you you take away something that's providing you little to no benefit in social media and eating things that taste nice. And you're, you're filling that up with long, sustainable things that'll uh, benefit you in the future. Well, yeah, talking about TikTok in particular, I was on it so much and I was going through and going, oh, this is a great trend, I should do this. And then I just wouldn't. And then I'd go, oh, this is a great trend, I should do this. And I wouldn't. And then I would just spend like so long on it a day. And I sort of sat there and went, I pride myself on being a creator and creating things. And right now, if you look at my output for the day, I am currently a consumer. Like I'm yep. not a creator here. I'm not on TikTok for work. I'm just consuming. And I'm not really consuming at any real sort of depth. It's just very surface level consuming where it's like eight seconds, eight, 10 seconds, eight seconds, 10 seconds. And that's when I started to get frustrated at myself. I'm like, mate, you're the creator. You're the one that's meant to be putting content out when all you're doing is sitting on an app consuming. It's a reversal of what you feel like you've been put on the planet to do. You've been sucked into watching and not creating. And that's when I was like, well, is what I'm doing at the moment optimal? Because <laughs> it doesn't seem yeah. like it was. Yeah, TikTok is a very cracky, dopamine-heavy <laughs> app. I remember you describing it to me as, it's the lights, it's it's showtime. You go on TikTok, it's oh bang, my bang, God, bang, it's beautiful. sound, it is beautiful. boobs, bloody whatever. It's all yeah. on there. Um, they've done well to, to make that app into what it is, but... Yeah, the future generations, I think, that there will be a reaction to the action of being on your phone for hours a day, scrolling through TikToks. And the thing with it is, something that um, I haven't had to deal with personally, but a lot of people have like an issue with themselves because they aren't as, I don't know, fit or as good looking or have as many followers as people online. And it just has such a negative effect on people's self-image when it's really, it doesn't mean anything at all how many followers you have and whatnot. Like, having 6,000 subs, you having 60,000. Like, that that has nothing to do with your identity of how you are as a person. Like, mm. just because you could have 10 million subs but not be happy with yourself. It's like, these numbers mean nothing. Um, but people will get caught up in that. People will get caught up in, that person has more followers than me. And it, it feeds into really bad mental health um, things like I've had a, a family member or not a family member, a family friend, um, whose daughter had committed suicide in 2018, 2019. And one of the things that she left, like a, a note that she left was something about Facebook and likes and how she would tried so hard to be like her friends and she was just never getting that recognition and stuff like that. So yeah. For the, for the kids listening, don't don't get caught up in social media because it means absolutely nothing. But, like, what what's your thoughts on that, like, the effect of social media? Yeah, well, it's, there's a lot of sort of things that I felt were affecting me in particular, but I think just being sucked into the phone was one of them. And I know that's very cliche and it's something I've spoken to Connor Rogers about as well at, at depths. And even, like, uh, the young King Cookson, he's never on his phone. He's... He, he's made a decision. As we know, to... I haven't seen him in bloody two years. <laughs> I haven't heard from the man. Bring him he's back. Also, he's also never on his Canon 80D either, which is <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a shame for us all. But uh, uh, he, he's, he was one real early who got the breakaway from the phone. And um, <laughs> when I go to him and go, oh, geez, I, I feel awful. He goes, get off your phone. And we, we know all these things, like everything we've spoken about today about, um, you know, sleeping patterns and food and exercise and phone usage and whatnot. It's the modern issue, but, and we, and we all know what to do. It's just whether, as you said, actions and whatnot. And um, it's whether you want to take the actions to actually do something about it. And you can, like I'm someone who was eight hours on the phone a day. It's down to about two, two and a bit. Um, that's a flex, that's, hey. That is a flex. That's a, a flex that you could put on social media. Get sucked back into it and just be a big, arrogant, mm. ego fueled boy. <laughs> nah, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, like that is unheard of. Um, being on your phone for an hour and a half, two hours a day in this current age, it's nuts. Yeah, well, I I wake up, I try not to look at it. If I'm on social media before I've put the kettle on for my oats, then I've that's just 
like, well, what am I doing? So I'll yeah. wake up, try not to touch it. I'll leave it in my bedroom. I go and I open my laptop and the first thing I'll do, and this is talking about habits, um, is I'll chuck on like this 10-minute inspirational video. It might be Kobe Bryant talking about work ethic. It might be Conor McGregor talking about manifestation. It might be some stoicism, um, some bloke chatting about like control what you can control and whatnot, which I just really find interesting. And I just think if I can start my day with, um, with a lesson, then I feel like I'm on. And then yeah, I'll do a bit of work sure. for about an hour. And then I'll knock over a meditation and go to the gym. And if I do all that, I haven't touched my phone by about 11 a.m. Like it's still mm-hmm. 11 a.m. and I haven't really touched my phone. Um, How good is it when you like, when you it becomes lose a your phone or something like that? Like um, I love when I don't know where my phone is because I haven't been on it for hours. Yeah, it, it becomes a challenge. Like at the moment, the streak on the meditation app is at 33 days and I'm like, I want to get to 34 uh, when I've been on my phone for like 30 minutes and it's 4 p.m., I go, geez, can I keep it under an hour for the day? Yeah. Um, so it, it becomes a bit of a challenge. But, oh, man, I, it, 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 if you're spending eight to ten hours a day on your phone and you sleep for eight hours, that means you only got six hours not in the phone. Yeah. And if you live to 90 and you spend eight hours a day on your phone of screen time, you're going to live 30 years of your life in your screen. That is like, nuts. That's scary. That's real yeah. scary. So that's, yeah, I, I don't know. And for me, just getting that little break away from the dopamine hits and the ads, the ads you get sent and whatnot, it's, it's been pretty good. And I just want to focus on myself and focus on what I'm doing and I want to be a creator, not a consumer. So, um, yeah, getting... <laughs> Given the phone that Dusty Martin's been pretty handy the last little bit. What would be your advice to kids that are caught up in social media and it affects them? Like one thing that I despise is Snapchat scores, like streaks and just, yeah, that snap score in general. Like um, if, if you have a snap score that's over like 2 million, 3 million, like mm. the higher your score, I think, is an indicator of how addicted you are to your phone. Like yeah, people, I, I don't know if people flex their snap scores, if that's a thing or whatever, <laughs> but like that is not something to be, to be proud of how big your snap score is, because it just means that you're getting caught up in something that really isn't that real. And, mm. um, yeah, obviously Snapchat's a good thing to stay in contact with friends and a lot uh, and whatnot, but there's a lot of negatives that come out of that as well. Yeah. Well, advice. I don't know. You got to figure it out for yourself. You, you got to feel shit on the app to then go, I don't want to be on the app. And yeah. um, when you do get that clean breakaway, you you just, it, it opens your eyes a little bit about like, I don't know, the amount of like, I've been Googling laptops recently um, because I want to upgrade some of my equipment and I'm getting bombarded with like laptop ads on all my social medias. And I, it starts to like, oh, I am the product a little bit. Like I'm being sold to these companies and I, I do feel like that a little bit where it's like, oh, geez, like someone's paying Instagram to feed me stuff and it's very, very obvious and it's very obnoxious and um, it doesn't make me feel very good and then I'm getting sucked into this phone. So I'm getting sucked into this thing that they're farming like products out to but I can't get off it and it's it's, it's a very very trappy at times and, mm-hmm. and I'm not talking about the rap genre. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It's It's... I think you just got to find out what's best for you. Sometimes people will be so busy and be working on their phone that six to seven hours is what they can do. But uh, yeah, I, I just think if you're trapped on the socials, that clean break is um, is very, very handy. This break in the podcast is still brought to you by absolutely nobody. My podcast is available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So if you are listening on those platforms, please leave a rating and a review. It helps out the podcast more than you know. I also post my podcast clips on my TikTok at underscore Druzy. So go follow that up and enjoy the rest of the episode. It's a good one. The people haven't come here to listen to us talk about us trying to better ourselves. Still, so they, they couldn't care less. They they want the footy yarn. They want the footy talk. Yes. AFL yes. 2021, the best year in your existence as a Melbourne wow. Demons fan. You, you've yep. reached the pinnacle, mate. You're, you are a premiership supporter. How does that feel? Because I wouldn't know. Uh, amazing. Like really, really amazing. Like 
just the work of a lot of people over a long period of time, a lot of blood, uh, a lot of blood, sweat and tears um, to all come to fruition was very, very exciting. And then you like, instead of going back through the old press conferences and the old interviews and seeing this number one draft pick is going to be a star. And it's like 10 years later and they got traded and retired. <laughs> um, <laughs> Shout out to Jack Watts. <laughs> and Tom Scully. <laughs> and, and instead of looking back and going, oh, they were speaking all this shit that I was buying into and nothing came to fruition. Um, fast forward to going back to press conferences and interviews now over the last couple of years and everything that they were putting in place has happened. And I watched like the old Demon documentary. Um, uh, not the comeback. Demon Fan oh. Diaries? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that, oh, geez, what a series. Um, uh, it, it was called uh, Back from Hell or Return from Hell or... Um, to Hell and Back. To Hell and Back, that's the one. Um, and I was watching that back and that was in 2019 and it's Simon Goodwin at the end of 2019 where we finished second last, getting up and saying, we want to be selfless, we want to be hard contested, we want to play for each other. And he's saying all these things that in 2021 we were getting applauded for and recognised for and just shows you how much work things take and um yeah to to see the boys i was just so happy for them i was so happy for the board the past players um i was happy that i got to see it with dad and um yeah it was amazing it was an amazing night and it was an amazing final series and they did it in a bit of a canter so (laughs) i don't know whether i'll ever i'll ever watch the d's do that so like the stress levels throughout that final series wasn't too bad so i don't think i'll ever be in that situation again so it it was an absolute privilege it was so sick to see like the the club culture of melbourne take off like yeah as you said the the seeds were planted a couple years ago when goodwin took over but that selflessness is the mark of a of a champion side like you look at richmond it's just um yeah that that brotherhood because you, it doesn't matter how many Nat Fives and Paddy Dangerfields and Paddy Cripses you have in your team. If you can't gel that together, if you don't have that brotherhood connection, it's not going to work. And like Melbourne, I'd say don't have the best list in the competition. Like you have Petrarca, Gorn, Clayton Oliver, Viney, which is yeah up there with one of the best midfields. But like yeah, obviously yeah Fritch and and Ben Brown they're pretty big forwards and Bargo, then you got Neil Bullen like yeah, there's a lot you, of unlikely they're all role players around yeah 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 they, they just all know their role really well and they know how they can yeah get their teammates out of shit spots or what they can do to to lead as an example the grand final was nuts when you were down by <laughs> like three goals four goals and then just like no giving up not backing down that game against Geelong at GMHBA when I turned off the TV because I thought it was going to be a shit game and you come back <laughs> and won the minor premiership like that that mentality as a club is what makes you bulletproof it's not the star power that you have that obviously helps but yeah the the foundational pillar of being a premiership side is that team camaraderie, the club culture, the selflessness. Yeah, well, and it goes, you know, we're, we're going on to the footy topic, but it almost goes back to what I've been sort of learning over the last little bit through your Jordan Petersons and types. And it talks mm-hmm. about if you get yourself right and it, how, like, how you conduct yourself can affect others. And the way that 100%. they play is like if Charlie Spargo selfishly, unselfishly, that plays his role and just mm. plays his role and doesn't try to, you know, help Gorney in the ruck and doesn't try to help Stephen May in full back. If Charlie Spargo just plays Charlie Spargo's role and wins that role, then that helps us mm-hmm. with our game plan. If Alex Neil Bullen, you know, doesn't try to kick 75 goals a game and, and just plays his defensive pressure role, it helps the team. And they all just got really good at really disciplinedly playing their own game and that almost Mm -hmm. sounds selfish in a way where it's like oh he's just in it for himself but it's like no if everyone does their own thing they come together really well as a team and even tactic wise i've never seen a bit of a masterclass in what simon goodwin did um the game against geelong to turn the game on its head against the cats in geelong it's never been done like no one Mm goes down to the Cats by 40 points at GMHBA and come back and win. And even to then mix it up and 
flog the cats in the prelim. It was just very impressive. And then the way um, he had a plan B against the Bulldogs as well, halfway through the grand final, biggest game of the D's in almost, you know, in 60 years. And just the the sort of whereabouts to be able to change the game and, and the players as well to, to buy into Goody so much that he can have that of effect. It was it was just incredible. And I don't know. I, it was just amazing. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, I'm reading at the moment um, 11 Rings. It's a book by Phil Jackson. If you don't know who Phil Jackson is, he coached the Chicago Bulls to the six championships, finished up there, and then just went and won another measly five at uh, the Lakers with Kobe. So he coached Kobe, one of the best ever, and obviously MJ is the GOAT. Um, imagine having a coach in the AFL that won 11 championships. Like, that is yeah. unfathomable. But, yeah, reading through his book right now, like, and we go back to that that self-help and improvement of yourself and whatnot, but that was, like, one of his biggest things as a coach, like, that helping, was, players, yeah. helping players realise who they are and what their purpose is on the team and how they can be selfless to, to make... Uh, the yeah the system work I suppose but yeah and, and that's what the Tigers did that's yes, what the Tigers yeah. did in the last couple of years they all bought in you know with your Ben Crows and whatnot to this like um, we don't want some bloke coming into the side and uh, doing something that he's that isn't in, innately him we want mm-hmm. individuals in our side and that sounds selfish like we want a bunch of individuals but we want individuals to perform at their best we don't want anyone coming in and playing a role that they're not comfortable with. We want the best, you know, he might be a worse player than this bloke coming in, but he's that best player for that role. Um, yeah. It's just incredible. And it, it has shaped the AFL a little bit. And I feel like the way Nathan Buckley coached the Pies for a couple of years there was very much the same, um, embracing individuals for the overall uh, betterment of a team environment. And, yeah, it's something that the Ds certainly have incorporated and done to a very high standard in the last year or so. Yeah, it's crazy how much sports can just like, I don't know, transcend into something so much bigger. Like, um, love yeah, just it. the, I, love it. I don't know, you can use all the metaphors and whatever <laughs> that you want, but just, yeah, the, the bettering of yourself. And then, I don't know, in basketball, you only have five people on the court, so it's a lot different to, to the AFL, but just like working in flow, like working mm. in motion as a team. Phil Jackson used to play like this certain... Um, I don't I don't know about music, but like a certain um rhythm sort of thing, mm. and they'd practice to that, and they'd like work in flow. Um, but yeah, he's massive on his meditation, being in the moment. Um, and the way that he described some of the Bulls' biggest plays to win championships, it was just like picturesque, like everything mm. led up to that moment, and then the end product was just like a thing of beauty. It's yeah. nuts how sports can do that. Um, yeah. yeah, it would have been similar in the, the D's grand final, I suppose, or the, well, like, look at that game at GMHBA when you come back, like, after being pumped down there for years and years and years, like, you can't write scripts like that, you can't we, make that yeah. up. Yeah, we, I felt like the, the grand, I'd, I said, I, I wrote a thing to Adrian from the debrief, he hosts the, the Melbourne Fan Podcast, and I said to him, I'm like, I don't know what will happen over the next month, but what happened in GMHBA and in Geelong was significant, like, to mm-hmm. me, it was one of those things that if it was the movie, it sort of rippled throughout the universe. What what they did in terms of banishing the mental, pardon the pun, demons over the last like 10, 20 years down at that football ground. Um, we'd taken it up to the Cats over the last couple of years. Like the babies in 2018, your Olivers, your Petrarchas, your Brayshaws, we were all like 21 beating the Cats in 2018. And the Cats midfield at the time was Dangerfield, Salwood, uh, Gary Ablett had just come <laughs> back. So, um, yeah, so or maybe it might have been before Gary Ablett was back. But in 2018, for that young group to take on the Cats and beat them um, and then have a couple of lame years but still develop and then just, yeah, all those horrible results down – in my hometown, um, <laughs> for them to just banish all that, the weight of all that in that second half because it was staring down the barrel of it happen- happening again and I'm going, we're second on the ladder. It's the best season we've ever had and we're still going to get pumped by Geelong. Like, when will this end? Like, will this just happen forever? This is the best Melbourne football side I've ever seen and it's ha- still happening. So when is this not going to keep happening? And 
it stopped happening in that second half. And if you watch the game back, which I have 55 times, um, <laughs> in that third quarter, we don't kick our first goal until there's like five minutes left. So they chase down the 45 or 42 or 43 point deficit in like a quarter and five minutes. It's mental. It's absolutely mental. But Gorn, you are a big sexy bastard. That was <laughs> and I go to that ground every year. I go to that ground every year and sit through it all. Like I sat through the 180 point loss and didn't leave the whole game. I just sat through it. And I love when like your footy side is playing in your hometown. Um, it's just so exciting. It's like all my heroes. I remember going to Simmons Stadium, Skilled Stadium for years and just being like, oh, David Neitz is going to be walking around Geelong. Like Russell Robinson is going to be in Geelong. Like that is crazy. And um, then I'd watch them just get rolled every game. Um, so I just wish I was there. If I was there and Gorney marks it, I probably would have died on the way out, but it would have been worth it. Um, <laughs> it was it was incredible. Yeah. Season 2022 is going to be back up and running, hopefully. Obviously, it's going to be very COVID-affected again, um, but still keen, nevertheless. Um, it's easier to win one flag than it is to win two, believe it or not. So, <laughs> you're going you're gonna to be chased this year. Um, you're, you're still the flag favourites, obviously, because you just ran through the final series like it was nobody's business. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's going to, it's going to be an interesting season now that you're being chased, now that you're the new standard, um, it just changes the dynamic completely. Um, are you confident they can go back to back? That footy club has 56 more years until I, um, start <laughs> getting a little bit impatient. What they did will, uh, serve me for a long, long time, but geez, the sort of motivated, uh, hungry bastard in me goes, to see one more live in the flesh would cap it all off. And maybe I'm asking a bit too much given the current run rate in flags for the Melbourne Footy Club. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think they can do it. I think the age demographic is ridiculously yeah, you're pretty young, hey? exciting. Like, half our team were 21. <laughs> yeah. Like, there was your, your James Jordans, your Tom Sparrows, your Bowies, Cosy Pickett, Luke Jackson, Trent Rivers... Uh, it's ridiculous, the youthfulness. And then we've got that core of 26-year-olds um, who, like, you don't you don't play your career best footy till you're 27, 28-ish. Yeah. Ish. And um, we got Petrarca winning norms and Clayton Oliver, two-time All-Australian, three best and fairest. Um, what we've got is so special and the core group is so special. And when we add Jacob Van Royen down the oh, forward line and... really what a gun. Um they they're just ticking boxes left, right, and center. I, I would love to see them do 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 it again. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I, I think they can, and I think uh, there was a big article at the end of the trade period that like this is the chance for teams to catch up to the premier. Mm-hmm. And after this year's trade period, um, it was a bit of a clickbaity article, but it sort of said that the Melbourne Footy Club wouldn't be too worried in terms of like no team drastically improved or did a Geelong where they get like three guns in over an off season you go holy yeah. shit the cats have brought in you know Higgins Isaac Smith and Jeremy Cameron like that's incredible yeah. no team did that this year so from a Melbourne footy club point of view when you look around it's like very similar like I know teams will improve and teams will drop off but it's it's a very similar competition so I think yeah they've got a they've got a good sniff at it and I just can't wait for it to start. A month and a half, I'm going to be at Wednesday night football watching the D's take on the Oh, yeah, on the Wednesday. Dogs. That's true. And there's true. no crowd caps in Melbourne. so Sick. Hopefully it stays that way. I don't want the Omicron, but I'll be going with your <laughs> bloody scarf and just cheering the boys on. And it's the first time I'll be seeing the premiers in the flesh. Yeah. So far out. Yeah, it's stupid <laughs> to think that I got to see the D's win a flag before you <laughs> did, to be honest. <laughs> In the flesh. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, you've, you've strengthened with Dunstan as well in the midfield, which is just a handy backup to have. He'll probably be in the best 22 anyway. They'll probably fit him in. But yeah, Jacob Van Royen mm. in the draft. He's someone that I was massive on um, going into the draft. Really wanted him at Frio. But I honestly think he's one of the best forwards in the draft. And other than Ben Brown, Tommy Mack has been sort of inconsistent at times throughout his career. But mm. if you can just develop Van Royen into a genuine key forward beast, which I think he can be, um, and he can play as a swingman as well. He can play in defense as well, just as good. Like, 
he's going to be a real talent, Jacob Van Royen. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some of the clips that they are releasing the Melbourne Footy Club online, it's just him taking pack marks. And it's yeah. on like Jake Lever. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit absurd. Um, and he's a massive kid. Like he, mm. he looks big. And I don't know, like the way our development is at that football club, like for years we'd get first round draft picks and I wouldn't even bother learning their names because they'd be chewed up and spat out of the competition as fast as you could say. Jacob Van Royen's going to win the Coleman, but um, <laughs> yeah, it, it was just it was just really really disappointing. But now the way they develop at the Footy Club, um, there's no reason why he probably can't play round one. Like what they did with Luke Jackson, this sort of skinny athletic kid who just started taking midfield center clearances in his second year uh, was absurd. I'm still really bullish on my man Sam Wiedemann. Yeah, I reckon if the VFL was still running and it was a normal season. He would have cracked into the 22 towards the end of the year. Tommy Mack's first 12 rounds were exceptional, but he was a little bit uh, quiet for the rest of the season. And I reckon that would have caused some um, competition for spots. Uh, But Tommy Mack was still solid throughout the finals, gave a target. He gives Ben Brown the biggest chop out. But I I still think, yeah, Sammy Weed could probably crack in. But the thought of like a a Sammy Wiedemann, uh, Lukey Jackson, Jacob Van Royen forward line over the next, you know, six or seven years is very, very exciting. I can't believe you've snuffed out Cozzy Pickett, Luke Jackson, Jacob Van Roy, and just all these WA boys chucked him in your side and they're just going to absolutely um, kill it. The kid we got at 19, Blake Howes, watches some training footage. He moves like a silky operator. And yeah. we just keep, I don't know, we just keep topping up. So now you look at the list and it's like a big bulk of 26, 28-year-olds. Not really many over 30. But it's like 26, 28. And then we've got this big bulk of like 21 to 18 that seemed mm-hmm. really, really solid. I, I don't know if I've ever seen a list like that before, but... Um, I was trying to think, like, maybe... I, I actually don't know what the age demographic was, but, like, a side that's dominated for a decade would probably be, like, Hawthorne in the 80s sort of thing. Like, is there actually yeah. going to be a side that can win flags consistently, like, more often than not in a decade. Like, that would be nuts to mm. see. Cause we, like, obviously, the Tigers <laughs> went for a three-peat, but I think at this point, they're sort of going to, um, yeah, tremble down somewhat. They could still make finals this year, but I don't think they'll win it. Um, so, yeah, it'd be interesting to see just a side I'd, dominate for a decade. Mm. It's funny, the Swans almost had that decade. I, I was talking to one of my mates after the D's flag, who's a Swans man, and he goes, yeah, it sucks to lose him. And I'm like, mate, you've seen a couple flags. And he's like, we lost in 20... What? He's, he's 2006, they lost. He then saw them lose in 20... Third? Uh, 12? 2014. Or, no, they, 2014. Oh, 20, who they won lo- in 2012? They lost to the Bulldogs and they lost to West yeah. Coast. And I don't know if there's an extra one in there, but he's like, yeah, I've seen us lose, like, they lost the Bulldogs, Hawthorne, West Coast, and they, they won 2012, yeah. right? The Swans? Yeah, I'm they, pretty won, sure 2012. they won in 2012. Yeah. But they could have had like a decade. Like yeah. That. They were very, very good. Um, They'll be up there soon. The Swans will be a top four side this year, I reckon. <sighs> that That's exciting. Yeah. No, nah, they're a scary side. And they've the probably eight, all got the COVID as well, so they're going to be in good stead because they've already had it, yeah. shouted out, ready to go now. Well, the eight... The eight could look very different because I don't think a West Coast will be in it. And then Mm -hmm. I'm not sure where Geelong is at. So you could see like a really weird top eight where it's like GWS, Blues, Essendon, D's, Bulldogs, Port. Like that's just a weird, weird top eight. I've got an early prediction and I think this would be the most absurd grand final to have back at the G um, because fingers crossed Victoria can host it again. If you but say Colton, I'm going to end this podcast. <laughs> no, no. I, I reckon uh, touch wood and fingers crossed and uh, praise Allah. Um, I hope that – that's not disrespectful, is it? No, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, I was just saying – I was just being silly. I was like, oh, anyway, uh, praise Colton. <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs> don't cancel, cancel me. I didn't mean that. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I think – yeah, touch wood. I think hopefully the Ds could make it. And then I think – um, the Richmond Football Club last dance style 
give it yeah. one hell of a crack. And it's the D's and the Tigers, the two MCG tenants, 100,000 people at the G. The Tigers want to see one more. The D's are trying to win one in front of their home crowd for the first time in 58 years. I just think that just would be an absolute granny and a half. Yeah, I just wrote off Richmond, but they definitely could bounce back. They they only had one blip this season, um, but yeah, they had they finished. Um, yeah, like they were in. A, yeah, but they had three flags and they played in the semi uh, a prelim. Like when you're finishing your season in, yeah, end of September, have a bit of a bender until like all throughout October. Mm. Like, yep. your pre-season's pushed back and all those other teams are working. Like, for them to not make finals, they can really reset. They've got the champion DNA in there. They could really make a run at it. So, yeah, I think mm. Richmond and West Coast, for both of them, it's a make or break year. Are you serious or are you not? And it's if you don't make it this year, West Coast, I think it's time for a rebuild. Um, yeah, with be. Richmond, probably the same because... Yeah, they're again one of those sides with a lot of role players, no real stars. Obviously, obviously you got Dusty and Jack Rewalt. Jack Rewalt's probably pushing the end of his career. Um, but yeah, other than that, like, who do Richmond really have that are gonna sustain success? I th- I think their window has come and it's slightly just closing. And can they slip through one more time to the other side of the Premiership window? We'll see, but I don't think they will. So with footy season, Dosso comes footy content and i'm missing it very much because my views are at an all-time low um what (laughs) what have you got planned for the afl 2022 season obviously there's a lot of exciting things which you can't talk about unfortunately but tell me what you can what what's the plan man uh well this week i've got a goal recreation challenge with tommy mitchell coming out um so i think let me just that, that's think, a dub. That is a win. <laughs> I, we I count those. That'll be a video that um, hopefully the audience gets around. Um, I've got some big ideas uh, for this year. I want to do um, a Team McDonald versus Team Rogers style series, and I'm putting in place um, – I'm planning it all at the minute where I go and take on other AFL YouTuber uh, channels and whatnot and – yeah, take on other AFL influencers. Uh, my mates who are all in the goal recreations, just going around taking on um, people in that six-on-six, six, half-court, the 50-metre lines, the clearance ga- uh, type game of football. So I want to film that and release it like a, rea- a reality show. Like I want to have it like all cut up and all dramatic, but then also release like, the full uh, games um, separately as well. Um, I'm going to start a Patreon, Drews. I reckon yes. I, I want to do sort of less content on YouTube in terms of... Uh, in terms just of like I want to... The output, just reduce yeah. the output on YouTube. Yeah, I, I want to have like the quality a little bit better over the quantity, but I want to put the rest of the quantity that I normally do um, on Patreon, which will help keep the lights on at McDonald Enterprises. And it'll also help me do all the content that I want to do later in the year, like the series that I'm doing. I just spent 400 bucks on uh, our training singlets and we're, we're a fake football club that don't train. So what is the, what is the man doing? <laughs> Where's the, the profit coming in? <laughs> he needs to, um, he needs to meditate and get his head right. Cause I'm not sure why I did that, but I just thought, I just thought they looked cool. Um, so yeah, essentially, yeah, that I think the Patreon will help give a consistent flow of income, which will help me be able to put, a lot of well i put everything back into the content anyway but i'll help put a little bit more back into the content um and also i've got something massive hopefully well it is <laughs> um, it's astronomical it is astronomical and it, i don't know when it'll be announced i assume over the the next month but um if you listen to Drewsy's pod and in a month and a bit you see a big announcement by c mcdonald Come back here, and that's what Mandrews are excited about. So there's Fingers something crossed, big. It goes there's ahead. something big. Yeah, all touch wood. There's something big coming in the next little bit, which will. It's probably the biggest thing that's happened in my career. But um, yeah, I don't know. I just want to do quality over quantity. I love AFL content. I love it. To, like it's my favorite thing in the world. Um, I love that I've had a bit of an input in the genre, and there's people now coming up that will have more subs than me in a few years' time. Um, but just knowing that I sort of got the ball rolling a little bit is quite exciting. Mate, um, you're the kingpin. Don't get it twisted. 
Steve McDonald <laughs> on long. top. Funny, half the TikTokers and half the YouTubers that are coming up, they make such good, such good stuff. So yeah, you've been ma- grinding away for years, though. Like you've you were the first, and that's why you're on the top now because you've been grinding away for so long. You said to me a couple of weeks ago, um, you feel like you you're just getting started now. Like the the gun yeah. hasn't gone off yet. You've you've yeah. been putting in all this prep. Been doing all the reps, all these late nights, up editing, doing what you got to do, running everything off your own back. Now you're you're really you're you're getting that reaction to the actions that you've put in over the last six or so years. You're getting you're getting your dues, McDonald. Well, yeah, thank you. Well, like, um, I, I do feel like that though. Like, I'm as hungry. I'll, I'll think of a good analogy here. I'm a good analogy man. Um. <laughs> I, I do literally feel like I'm at the starting line and it sounds yeah. weird after sort of doing a six to seven year apprenticeship, but that's where I feel. I feel like I'm just at the starting line waiting for the gun. I sort of feel like a kid who's played his high school basketball. Oh, I'll probably do a footy analogy. I've been playing a lot of 2K, so that's why I went to uh, college college basketball. But yeah, I, I feel like someone who's played his junior footy, um, he's uh, played some good tack cup in 2019 and 2021. And um, I feel like I've, I'm just about to be drafted and I feel like I'm just about to start my career. Um, and that's how I feel. And I, uh, YouTube's the biggest part of that. I never want to turn my back on my YouTube channel, especially over the next few years. And it's something that I feel like I've done the apprenticeship for and I now know what I like to do on YouTube and I know how to execute things a little bit better. And um, yeah, to, to take some of the fat off the channel and not put out quantity and put out a little bit more quality um, I think will be really, really exciting. So I think this year at the moment is probably poised to be one of the most exciting for me. And yeah, it's funny that like if you're read into the the little hiatus or the little gap, you're probably thinking McDonald's throwing the towel in, but I'm not. I've never been more excited to make this sort of gear. And um, yeah, I'm just absolutely chomping at the bit to rip into some Wednesday night footy in a month and a half and watch the D's attempt to go back to back. It's so cool, man. Like, let's let's just take a, a moment to to think about what's going on. Like, we start out YouTube. We've I've got a camera in my room. I'm I'm filming on me, on me bloody 90D in my room. Call up Dossa. Like, but we we speak all the time. Like, we're always talking about the grind, the grind set. How can we how can we make this work? How can we get to where we want to be with this? Efforts always rewarded. Dossa always says, efforts always rewarded. You'll get your dues one day. Um, but to finally see what is going on with you yeah it's like yeah. it's it's inspiring i'm yeah i couldn't be more stoked for you to be honest it's yeah fingers crossed because nothing happens until it happens but yeah oh we're, I'm, we're, yeah it's we're, gonna be massive we're very close to sort of achieving a goal that i've been um working towards for six or seven years so it's it's very very exciting it'll be announced in due time probably over the next month or so there's still a lot of water to go under the bridge but also when it does get announced i I feel like I'm still at the beginning because yeah. um, I haven't achieved anything to do with that yet. I'm just only getting through the door. So I'm really excited to double down and learn. And um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I feel like the audience almost deserves it as well. They've stuck around through a lot and mm-hmm. they've, they're so supportive. You see like, you know, I put a stupid little video about me going through the Hungry Jacks. <laughs> that was up gold. And, and all the kids are just so supportive and it's like, oh, you make my day and I really appreciate you uploading and it's unreal. Like, And I've had this feeling since I've had a thousand subs and whatnot. It's such a privilege to have an audience and I don't really like people who um, get an audience quickly and start farming out products to them and, and whatnot. Um, I, I don't know if, if that's how you build a connection with your audience. I, yeah, I, you I got to earn really, that. I just really appreciate um, how much they've stuck around for and, um, and and how much they support me. And all I want to do is make content for them to be proud of. Like I really yeah. take um, kids saying that I'm their favorite YouTuber, which I think is ridiculous. There's, you know, there's... Um, Have you heard of you- Druzy? Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> there's YouTubers with millions of subs and teams behind them at, who make amazing content. So when a kid says, you know, writes a comment saying I'm their favorite... It makes me go, well, I've got to make good videos then. Like if, if I'm people's favorite creator, then I have to, uh, I have to, yeah, 
I, I have to show something for that. So I take that, yeah. I take that on really, really seriously. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping this year, you know, in 12 months, we'll look back and I sort of achieved everything I wanted to achieve. But once again, it's, I don't want to be a one year wonder. Yeah, I'm doing this for a long, long time. So yeah, um, it's all a process about improving from video to video and, and whatnot. And oh man, let me add it. Let me I add reckon, it seriously. I, I like to think of it. I don't know if you played much COD, but you know how you can like prestige, like you level up, you go up to level 70 and then mm. you prestige and you're back to level one, but you got a new emblem or like yeah. ju- jujitsu yeah. stripes. Like you, you've yeah. been earning your stripes over the years. You've probably just been upgraded to like a purple belt, I reckon, or mm. a brown belt. But you have no stripes now. You've got to earn your stripes at this 100%. new level. Now, that's a great analogy. I'm going to use that. Yeah, so you were saying that you filmed a goal reco with, with Tommy Mitchell that'll be out on Thursday. Now yes. he's your best mate. When, when I had a little pizza with him the other night. <laughs> yeah, How does Tommy that come Mitch. about? Ball magnets um, and that. Ball magnets, it, yeah, great app uh, first and foremost. But Tommy Go Mitchell, um, he, he DM'd me uh, at the end of last year and said he'd love to do like a training video together. Um, and yeah, so me and Rog went up and trained with him. That was probably when I was at my unfittest and most anxious. <laughs> I went and filmed with the great man and he couldn't be any more nicer and any more welcoming and any more. Um, he's just into this app and he's into YouTube content and he's, he's in it. Like he, he it, it wasn't like we rocked up and there was a whole team around him um, telling us what to do. It was like we rocked up and it was just Tommy Mitchell. And he's like, oh, let's film a vid. I'm like, oh, okay, Tom. Sick. Um, yeah, so I'll do sick. that. And then since then, um, he's just been like the friendliest, nicest bloke to me and Roggy um, and Bailey from Ballarat, the editor, that um, gives me a chop out. Um, yeah, he's just such a ripping lad and he sort of uh, threw out the idea. He's like, oh, we should go for a feed. And we're like, oh, yeah, all right. Thinking that it's like one of those things where it's like, you know, he throws it out but then doesn't follow it up on. But he did. Um, so we went and had wood fire pizzas at this amazing place the other night it's just <laughs> me Roggy, bailey and tommy mitchell and we're all sitting there and having a yarn and um, so sick yeah, really it, it, it is it is crazy it's crazy uh re- really good fella um yeah one of the best i've met in the industry and it's given me this really like profound appreciation for him as an athlete like when we did the training with him the way he man handled me was ridiculous it was obvious honestly terrifying like the way Tom Mitchell, <laughs> like his strength and power and to know that he is in an industry like he's not playing in an industry like local football and doing what he does he plays against like blokes better than him blokes stronger than him blokes bigger than him and he still gets the footy the amount of times he does and no one else does it that much I like and I'll, I'll put my hand up I've been someone that's like ah oh, Tommy Mitchell you know he just gets touches for fun he's not damaging because i know nothing about football but after doing that training session with him i was just blown away and i was like oh my god you you're potentially one of the best footballers <laughs> there is you're an absolute jet um yeah but yeah just nice bloke and it's just another weird thing <laughs> in the in the industry i guess like uh you know i've done some stuff with footy players before and kept in contact and relationships with them afterwards probably not to this extent where we're catching up and having a feed but um, yeah, some of the people that I've been lucky enough to work with in the industry are uh, just unreal. And it blows you away how sort of, I don't know, because as I've seen like your Chris MD say before on podcasts that football players, there's something different about them. Mm, like you'll meet okay. someone else who's sort of famous and it's like, oh, yeah, you're famous. But um, when it's a football player, it's like, oh, my God, you're a footy player. Like yeah. you are – you you. You were on the footy cards that I was selling uh, when, when <laughs> Which, I was at They have school. to go through such a grind and like you, you can't fall into being a professional athlete and sustain mm. that at a level like Tommy Mitchell has. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to, to bring the attention back to you, mate, because like, yeah, we, we talk a lot and we always say when we're, when we're high and when we're in the pits and a couple months mm. ago when you first started filming with Tommy Mitchell... Like, you hadn't been out much. You were probably not at, not at a very low point, but you weren't doing the best for yourself. You were unfit. Now mm. you've come out of that. You're much fitter and you're producing content with him. And you got to count your wins. And this is this is a big one. And, yeah, what you've got coming is a massive W. So that that's a mm. big couple Ws there. And, yeah, hold hold your hat on it. But we, we're earning our new stripes anyway. 
Yeah, we're about to level up. I feel like, yeah, I'm about to get me belt. I'm about to get <laughs> me new belt. Um, but yeah, uh, and I'm really excited for the Tom Mitchell content. I feel like that training video I felt was done pretty well. Like I was pretty happy with that. But this goal recreation, I'm so impressed by like the content that we captured and the way it was filmed and uh, the way it was edited. Well done, Dos. Go and have a dare ice coffee now, mate. Um, <laughs> and, and the way it's been put together, like I I don't want to say stuff like this because I'm I'm a real undersell over deliver bloke, but I feel like it <laughs> probably is my best video I've done. Yeah, by, no, for by, sure. By some much. <laughs> it so. just shows that there's levels to this stuff and yeah, all the reps that you've put in over time. The fact that you're still editing your own videos is ludicrous. Like, <laughs> it's so stupid. I, I've said this on a few pods now, but like we have to do everything for our own channels. Um, like everything you see, the thumbnails, the audio, the cameras, the editing, yeah. everything is done by us. And at the end of the day, what we really want to do would be to just rock up, have all that done for us, which is um something exciting. I'm not going to reel what you're doing, but you will have a team that you'll be working with yeah. coming soon. So yeah, um, well, and that's it is exciting too. Like, like I, I like being the one man band and I think I'm a bit of a control freak now where sometimes I'll palm off a video um, to Bailey who gives me a chop out. Um, and I go, ah, let me add it. Like I'm a control yeah. freak. I'm a, I'm a bad, uh, passenger seat driver. So, mm-hmm. and I got to get better at that. Like if I am going to work with Bailey, um, well, I will be, um, doing videos where he gives me a chop out and cuts a couple of things up for me. I, I got to get better at communicating, um, what I want in them. But yeah, the one thing that I'm super excited to do in the next month is yeah, crack in with a team and collaborate with like-minded people who are, um, who are going to help me and air check me and, you know, uh, give me tips and show me how to do things that I didn't know how to do. So it's, uh, I'm just so excited for this year from like going to the footy to make a footy content to doubling down and investing in the channel even more, which I've been doing for the last seven or eight years. And I'm really excited by the broader AFL uh, YouTuber community and AFL people on TikTok and stuff. I think it's so exciting for fans to really, like it's been a couple of years, but most channels that do footy stuff consistently are hitting your 10, you know, five to 10,000 subscribers. And if they do it, you know, consistently again, a lot of these channels will have 10,000 subscribers. And it's crazy when you look around like your, your blue abroads and your druzies and your card mans are going to be hitting twenties. Your, your true footies are going to be hitting thirties. And I don't know. It's, it's, just amazing to look around and see um that everyone can get a lick of the ice cream because i just think that youtube's such a big space that everyone can so i love yeah the amount of collaboration and sharing and and i love the standard that it's getting to now so i think it's an exciting space and exciting place and i think um in the next four or five years it will be exciting you know hopefully i can crack crack the hunge your cardies will probably be on your two hundreds. Uh, <laughs> your druzies will be on your hunges. So I won't. I won't be in Australia at that point. I reckon I'll probably be irrelevant by the end. Well, you'll be on your time. You'll be on a mill with your Manchester United content. But um, <laughs> it's it, it is exciting, and I just think I don't know. It's Australia about ten years behind America and the UK, but we're yeah. starting to catch up, especially in the sport department. And I'm happy that I had some sort of a hand in it, even though my hand was filming on my webcam and making shitty footy videos. But it's good I to might, see that like... <laughs> I might have said this in uh, the last one that we did, but I feel like you're the pioneer. Like you're mining into this cliff and you've been mm. chopping away at it for years and years and years and then Cardi comes in and gets his pickaxe and he's yeah. swinging into it. True footy's getting his drills in there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, the community's become really sick. Like to see Cardman... Um, go from a, a little boy to doing what he's doing. He's got one of the most interactive AFL YouTube channels that there mm. is. Mitchy Ryan, destined for massive things. You cats oh, going to have a breakout year. Oh, um, there's pro- probably, if you're missing, shout outs right ahead to you if you're, if you're watching. <laughs> True footy CP gets up for did this year. Did you say UCAT? I did say UCAT, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, you, you, UCAT's going to be most improved this year, I reckon. you will have the, the biggest year. UCAT, it's crazy. Like I, I watch a lot of that sort of stuff. And I tune into a lot of the videos and man, like as I said, when I started with my $99 webcam and I'd have to have it connected to my laptop to film. So when I did parodies, I would take my laptop and my webcam and film stuff. And I look at like a UCAT and a lot of those 
uh, people in the community who were coming up and oh my god the graphics and the editing and the yeah. quality is just absurd <laughs> it's just so good so um yeah i'm so optimistic and bullish on the community and where it can go to and if you are listening to this and you're like i want to do footy videos i feel like there's no better time than now to hop on um all you got to do is start you just chuck stuff out you've, you've got a a camera on your phone which is better than the webcam that i started with and you probably got editing apps on your phone that cost way less than the stuff that i started with as well so uh, yeah go out have fun film some stuff chuck it up and uh yeah we'll give you a shout out this time next year when we're mentioning <laughs> it all again <laughs> um how old were you when you started youtube i was really late to the game i was like yeah. 21 22 yeah. so yeah something that you've told me like in my sub growth bad or slow or whatever i'll be like <laughs> toss i've only had like 60 subscribers this month or whatever it was and you're like, yeah, but you're 20, so you're 6,000 up on me at that time, which is <laughs> yeah. something inspiring to think about. Uh, what you were saying about just getting started on YouTube, like that's how I started listening to a podcast like this, two blokes um, from Football Daily, a digital media company in the UK, Joe, Joe Tomlinson and uh, Hamill, they were speaking. And they were just like, literally, just start making videos. Like if people are going to judge you for it or whatever, you, you don't need those people giving your giving you their opinion like don't take their opinion if you wouldn't take advice from them sort of thing just have a good circle around you to support you to make content just yeah get it out there look at the people that you want to become or that you want to emulate or reflect in your content um and just hit people up ask for feedback like um yeah these youtubers really aren't that hard to reach out to the first video i ever made was a ufc vlog and i hit up some bloke called Caden mcdonald and said <laughs> Um, could, could you tell me what you think of this? Probably didn't watch it, but you said it was good, which gave me a bit of dopamine. So <laughs> thanks for that. Um, but yeah, here we are a couple of years later. I've asked Dosso for mountains of advice and the same as Jesse. And then all of a sudden I've got a, a nice new camera, tripod, got, got all the gear, no idea, but we're, we're making it work. So yeah, definitely just get started if it's something that you're passionate about. People might tell you that it won't work, but those are haters and we don't listen to the haters. So if it's something that you want to do, give it a crack. Yeah, 100%. We're in a day and age now where everyone does TikTok anyway. So the people saying, oh, your videos suck, you could probably go on their TikTok account and see them dancing to some song with their <laughs> mates and be like, well, what are you doing here, Shaq? So yeah, yeah creating is just so much fun. It's a fun hobby. It's a fun outlet. Um you shouldn't have to justify that you're doing it. And if you're thinking about it and you're on the precipice, then give it a crack. And I think what those young lads are doing on the AFL community is absolutely massive, the way that they engage with each other's videos and they support each other on the live streams. Uh, it wouldn't take long. Like all you'd have to do is comment on a couple of the boys' videos and sort of ask a bit of advice, even from those lads who have this whole friendship group based around uh, AFL content. It, yeah, it, it's not like impossible to start and then you start making mates you start making videos with those mates you start meeting like-minded people and yeah you're, you're away to the bloody beaches and all of a sudden you're smashing a margarita pizza with tommy mitchell and you're going how the <laughs> hell has this happened <laughs> i finish every podcast off dosso with the two hardest hitting questions a man could ever ask what advice would you give to yourself five years ago 26 so it would have been 21 oh god i was just like so late i was like oh radio don't don't want me um why doesn't radio want me i'm never gonna make it what am i gonna do and i was just back against the wall the world's against me the world's happening to me um and i was just really frustrated and i had a conversation with my radio lecturer who said start a podcast start youtube and i haven't looked back since and i've had opportunities off the back of that <laughs> advice like i've had opportunities off the back of just doing my own thing um, and I'd just say, and I think he knew it. I, I think 21-year-old McDonald, considering he's here now, I think he knew it. Like I, he, he had this um, this foresight and this ambition, this unwavering sort of belief in himself. which Vision. Vision for sure, which we lost a little bit over the last two years, but we're, we're getting it back. But um, <laughs> he, he just knew that he could make it. And um, so I would just say keep going, like no matter what, just keep going going on the path that you, you're going on and, and back yourself in and continue to back yourself in, which I don't think I would have had to advise him that much on because he already did that. Um, and yeah, geez, it's it's crazy that like if I had said, oh, 
what you're trying to achieve, touch wood, hopefully in the next month, um, will happen in five or six years. Yeah, it's funny if I said that to him back then, he um, he probably would have felt like that was a long way away. Like he <laughs> would have been like, oh, 21 to 26, what, what the hell? But um, it's not that far away. It's actually very quickly and it's actually very young. Like to, I don't know, to land something like this is, you know, I'm not 45. So yeah, uh, yeah. Be, be a bit more patient. That's a good one. Be a bit more patient. Is probably For sure. What yeah. No, I like that. Just having that that vision and always having faith that if there's a will, there's a way. And yeah, not getting caught up in the, the negatives of it. Like YouTube isn't all clout, money, fame and, and boobs. There's a lot of <laughs> late nights at your laptop grinding yeah. away. There's a lot of uh, 10 out of 10, it, not in a good way, videos. When you mm. upload a video, if it's one of 10, it's the best out of the last 10. There's a lot of 10 of 10s, as I've realized, uploading in this summer period. Yes. And um, those will get you down. But hopefully one day I'll have a, a podcast with sponsors and people that can set up lights for me and, and whatnot. That'd be just sick to yeah, work towards something like you are about to be presented with. I'm 20 years old, so hopefully by the time I'm 25, bit like yourself, I can I can have something that, yeah, my dues will be rewarded with, if that makes sense. Well, there's there's genuinely no reason why you can't. And the only yeah. reason you won't is if you don't. So yeah. that's just the long and short of it. Like I've got a lot of mates who are in and around my videos who I think are funnier, better, more confident than I am. Um, and they just don't do it. And the <laughs> only reason they don't have it is because they just don't do it. And they go, I'd like that. And I go, you could have it. You could absolutely yeah. have it. And I'd help you have it. Like I will handball it to you. Just catch the ball. And by yeah. the time I'm sort of given the handball, they turn around and get distracted by something else. So I just <laughs> think it's if you want it, well, for you in particular, once you get to 6,000, whether it takes 50 years, you will get to 50,000 subscribers. Like once you get a small amount, it rarely goes down. So mm -hmm. the only way is up. So if you just keep doing what you're doing, it will happen. And the only reason it won't happen is if you don't. So, Yeah, no. Nah. Like, the only person stopping you from doing what you want to do is you, in most cases. Obviously, there's caveats to that, but, um, yeah, there's no one stopping you from doing what you want to do, mate. Follow your dreams, as, as cheesy as it sounds. Um, all right, we'll finish it off with, where do you see Caden McDonald in five years' time? 31-year-old so, Dosser. So excited. 31. That's prime Bailey. time, I reckon. Bailey Fridge. Um. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, I'm so excited. So I've had sort of like conversations with my mates recently and they, they're a bit, I don't know, when you start approaching 30, it gets weird. Like all the boys start thinking about like uh, moving out and settling down and whatnot. And we're only 26, but, um, and a lot of them are like, oh, that sort of sucks. And in my head, I am so excited. Like the yeah. book I'm reading, which is The Adventures of Gade McDonald and The Five Musketeers, um, is just so exciting. Like every day I wake up there's a new new page I read and it's just it's the best like and the, oh geez he goes through some shit and he fucks a lot of stuff up and he um does some self-sabotage but then he gets on the assault bikes a body fit and he feels better and then he smashes some Darius coffee and feels bad but what I'm reading every day of the adventures of Cad McDonald and the three musketeers it's just so exciting and to know that the next five years is a chapter is really, really exciting to me. Like I cannot wait to see what unfolds and I can't wait to, um, yeah, crack into every obstacle and every hurdle. And I love building things. I love building the channel. I love building uh, relationships with people and, um, oh, just work wise, relationship wise. I'm so optimistic and so excited. So, uh, where, where will he be? I reckon I'll still be doing YouTube. I reckon I'll yeah. still be uploading. Um, I'm hoping that I'll have other gigs uh, to do with YouTube. I'm hoping I've legitimized myself in the media a little bit more. Um, I don't know if that's given the front bar a chop out or I don't know if that's, you know, it, what's Triple M up to? I, I don't know. I, I don't know what that means, but I, I'm hoping that I'm not just the YouTube guy, but also like legitimized in the media um, yeah. a little bit more. And I just want to make stuff. I love making stuff. So, yeah, and if I could do it with... Uh, Georgia riding shotgun I think that would just be grouse because mm -hmm. I think what we've built over the last couple of years is 
is amazing as well. So I'm just very optimistic over the next five years and um, I'm, I'm a big future guy. I, I don't really <laughs> live in the past. I'm on to the next and excited yeah. about the next. So I, can't, I, I cannot wait to see what happens. Um, yeah. You'll probably be in Malbs at that point. Man, that, that'd be with, the with dream. A po- with a Pommy accent going, oh, jeez, <laughs> the last couple of months were unreal. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Let's crack in. Let's film some stuff, brother. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, that'd be the dream. Like setting up a digital media company with you. Like you can get your reps in the industry over the next couple of years. I'll go live my life in Europe for a bit and then yeah. come back and we just get cracking into this. Um, but anyway, that's probably a good spot to leave it. Um, is there anything you want to plug before we go? Thank you for coming on, obviously. Oh, no worries. Um, yeah, get around the goal recreation. I think, um, I think, yeah. I think it's my best video ever. <laughs> I think yeah. It's it's Tommy Mitchell. It's a goal recreation. It's before footy starts. Usually I, I've chucked them out on Christmas Day before. Like I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> but I feel like I've timed it right for the first time in my life. Um, it's, it's at a stadium. It's it's at a stadium. It is at a stadium. It's just potentially my best video. So I would love people to check it out. Um, and yeah, uh, stay tuned for the Patreon and, and whatnot and the exciting news coming up. You won't miss it. Like if you've heard it on the Drew show, and then you'll know what I'm talking about when it gets announced and touch wood and whatnot, it, you know, if it happens. But, um, yeah, it's an exciting time. It's it, it's an exciting year. And um, I appreciate the people that have listened to this but are also subscribers of me. Yeah, I just appreciate you guys, yeah, sticking by me and let's have it. Let's absolutely have it. Let's have a crack. So, so keen to see what happens. Um, I appreciate you a lot, mate. You mean a lot to me. And um, yeah, you've been a great mentor to me, inspiring bloke, and you mean a lot to a lot of people. And you've you've made a difference in a lot of people's <laughs> lives, so I appreciate you. And you've you've given me more clout once again. Thank you, mate. I, yeah, I I genuinely appreciate those words. Um, yeah, it's been I don't know, it's been great to connect with the Drews and and a lot of people in the industry, but you in particular, because um, yeah, we see eye to eye on a range of things. Like it's it, it it's unreal to sort of bounce off someone, especially when it's like ah. Oh, this sucks. Like, yeah, you know, me Monday to Sunday is sucking at the moment. And then we'll uh, strategize of how we can fix that um, and whatnot. And it goes vice versa. So I really have appreciated um, yeah, your help over the last couple of years. And, uh, yeah, I'm glad that what I've done can give you a chop out. And I'm keen to see where you are in the next five years. So, yeah, let's absolutely crack in and give it a, a good shot. Absolutely. On to the next. Watch this space. Caden McDonald, remember the name. Drew's Yarn, episode eight. It's a wrap. Go sub to Caden if you're not already. Sub to me if you're not already. Go follow the socials up and whatnot. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. See you later.